No, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about NLP modeling because there's no such thing. There is uh, creating models, and there's many kinds of models and many ways to create them. What's become associated with NLP and the notion of modeling is different depending on which of the people who were around in the early days and the founders uh, is talking about. What I want to talk about is the kind of thing that's possible when you want to try and capture something of an exceptional behavior and transfer it to other people. Now, first things first, in order to capture something of exceptional behavior and transfer it to others, we don't actually need a model in order to do it. A model is a kind of an intermediary or middleman creation that we make. It's a, it's a conceptual map of how various aspects of what we assert are uh, necessary in order to create a similar result or class of result to what we're saying is being modeled for the purpose of transfer of information. In order to learn from someone, you don't actually have to create a model. We have the oldest way of acquiring a profession in the world, which is you be, take up an apprenticeship. You watch and learn. Yeah? You're given tasks to do. You do them, and you're told how to improve. Through repetition and through example over time, we acquire skills. So the first thing I'd like to do is to get you to separate in your mind the necessity of a model in order to acquire some kind of expert behavior. The model itself creates uh, a sufficient simulacrum, an imaginary uh, description, so that a person or persons can do something different than they've done before. When we talk about making models, it's not about creating copies, it's not about figuring out what that person is doing, we never know. All of the things that have been described as models in different places, um, they are artificial constructs which allow you to do certain things if you use them. Some allow you to make calculations and uh, to make predictions. Others give suggestions about process. But the thing about the nature of the models is that what you might see on a piece of paper or read about in a book is not the behavior itself. It's another one of these lies that could be useful. But the question is, what is it that you're looking to take from the exceptional uh, behavior that you're looking at, and what is it that you think you're going to do with it? You know, the question isn't, uh, is the model true or is it accurate? All models are lies. They either allow you to do certain things more easily with the model than without, but you don't get a copy. What you get is an indication of things that you can do differently. So let me give you an example. Um, a client who, uh, they, they were a holding company and they owned many luxury brands in different industries. So you had everything from cars to fine jewelry, watches, clothing, etc. Many different brands underneath the holding company. And in their uh, fine jewelry and their watches, they had done a complete, you know, top to bottom evaluation of their business and they changed the looks of the brand. They changed what's called the fascia of the businesses. They changed uh, the distance between display counters in the units. They uh, changed things about the uniforms. They retrained all of the people who were in the fine jewelry and watches. Uh, you know, they had a, uh, a kind of training that said, you know, when you place a, a chain bracelet on the mat, you should do it diagonally and you should do it like this. So they had a very kind of prescriptive uh, sales uh, training approach. And their question was, we think we're missing something in terms of uh, we've got some amazing salespeople. We have the data. We've got this small group of salespeople who create exceptional results. And then there's everybody else. The median is quite high and we're quite happy with that. But we want to know if we're missing something. What is it about these uh, people who are 
at the top that's different from the people who are at the median. Now, in the project, it turned out later on that what they were looking for, but hadn't articulated, was they were looking for little uh, tricks or techniques that these people were doing that the average people weren't. Whereas once I started to look at the situation and start doing the comparisons and start doing the evaluation, what I discovered was that there was really only one outlier out of the whole group. There was one person whose results were so far, they were stellar compared to everybody else's. And, and looking at that one person's behavior, it was pretty straightforward in figuring out what was going on that allowed them in their business unit to take about 80% of the revenues through what they were doing. But it didn't come about by going into people's strategies, asking about meta programs and creating some kind of profile, you know, doing all kinds of uh, presumed modely, modeling kind of activities. It wasn't that. What it came down to in terms of creating a model of what this person was doing was sitting back from the whole thing, taking the spectacles off, taking the filters off, taking the expectations down and having a look and looking across the spectrum of the activities that they engaged in. And what was extraordinary was very quickly, it became clear why their performance was exceptional compared with everybody else. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on.